Hi, my name is Katie Spina. I'm a medical student at Boston University School of Medicine. Hi, my name is Richie Silla. I'm a resident at Kaiser Permanente Santa Clara. So Katie, why don't you tell us about your experiences with the MCAT? Sure. So after finishing my undergraduate degree in chemistry, I was pretty nervous and I didn't feel quite ready for the MCAT. So I took time to study and take a prep course, which made me feel much better. And by the time I took the MCAT, I felt prepared. I took a slightly different approach. A friend of mine and I decided to study together three times a week in the evenings, and then on Saturdays we'd take a full-length practice exam. And that way when test day came, it was just like any other day to us. So if you're thinking of taking the MCAT in 2015, you could be one of the first to take the new exam. The MCAT exam has to keep up with the field of medicine, which changes rapidly. The doctors I work with and doctors everywhere today have to face a much more diverse and senior population than yesterday's doctors did. And the MCAT exam is one of the tools that medical schools use in order to make sure that you're walking through their doors prepared to learn. So here's the breakdown. There are four sections. For each section, you'll receive a separate score. The first three sections are science-based. The first two cover natural sciences, and the third covers social and behavioral sciences concepts. You can get the knowledge and skills you need for the science sections by taking the following courses at your college. Introductory sequence in biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, also one semester of biochemistry, sociology, and psychology. But check with an advisor at your school to make sure that's true for you too. Then there's the critical analysis and reasoning skills section, which is different from the others. What it doesn't do is test any specific topic or subject area. What it does do is test whether or not you have the reasoning and analysis skills you'll need in medical school. The critical analysis and reasoning skills section requires that you read passages and answer questions. This section tests your ability to comprehend, evaluate, and utilize information from the passages. These sections cover the topics of social sciences and humanities, including ethics and cross-cultural studies. You can get more details about the new MCAT on the website, www.aamc.org forward slash MCAT 2015. And you can download the preview guide for the MCAT 2015 on the website. The preview guide explains how the exam works, the content covered, and the skills tested. It also includes topic lists and sample questions. Really everything you need. Two more reasons to visit the website. One, the topic lists are being tweaked and refined between now and the 2015 release date for the new exam. And the website is where you'll find updates and additional information. Two, the AAMC is developing new prep materials to help you with the new exam, and these will be found also on the website. So let's recap. If we survive the MCAT, you can too. It's hard, but if it's your dream to be a doctor, it's worth it. The MCAT exam is changing, and everything you need to know about the new exam, how it changed, why it changed, can be found on the website. So start early, study hard, and take advantage of the tools and prep materials offered by the AAMC, and you too can become a physician in training. Good luck.